Off the Hook, airing on OffTheHookSports.com. Your home for real news, real opinions, and what really matters about Tennessee athletics. The Off the Hook podcast at OffTheHookSports.com or Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or wherever you go for your favorite podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, iHeart. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Off the Hook with Dave Hooker starts now. So look at the one and only John Adams joining us right here on the Ball Report, brought to you by Big Orange Philly and Viles Automotive Group. I'll tell you more about them. Viles Automotive Group is right there on Callahan. It's fantastic. They have selection. They have quality. And best of all, they have integrity. Big Orange Phillies is a family fun environment that you can go and watch games at, hang out at, have great food at. Right there on Maynard Pike in downtown Hall. The bottom line is both run by uh, a great establishment, both great establishments. So check out Big Orange Phillies or Biles Automotive Group. I remind you to click on like and subscribe if you like to see me, Dave Hooker, with uh, John Adams, who actually at times can be known as Johnny One, but that's like an alter ego. So we may get to that. But again, like and subscribe, and we'll be. Uh, with you each and every day, or at least for me and John, once a week, uh, brought to you by Boss Automotive Group and Big Orange Phillies. John, it feels like it's almost football season. We're past July the 4th. We're getting close. Media day, just a short time away. It's 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 getting there. I'm feeling it. Are you feeling it? Bobby Bowden said he used to go to the restroom more often close to this time of year. I didn't really need to hear that. I had never heard it before. And if I'd have never heard that, I would be just fine with it. Uh, Here's a problem I have with preseason football. The SEC media days is so soon, middle of July now. So after the media days, it's supposed to be the kickoff to the football season. So you have the media days, and then what do you have? You have a week of nothing, nothing, a a big blank space. Then teams start practice. August, I think, really drags on for football fans. I think the goal is to be the NFL. The NFL has something big that happens pretty much every month, whether it's off-season training camp or reporting for OTAs or all that. I think that was the goal when they moved it up in July. But you're right. I wouldn't mind if, if it was closer to the season or at least closer to – uh, when they actually start practicing the football, as they call it. So uh, there are a couple of things I want to get to because there's plenty of news uh, going on, and we're going to talk conference realignment, what that could mean for the balls. It could be significant, but as a whole, what it means for college football. Brought to you in part by Big Orange Philly at Big Orange Philly. They have the food, whether you're listening around lunchtime or dinner time, you can go there and uh, go to the – If you'd like to, go to the fridge, grab something cold from the fridge, or order hot food from the counter, all fresh ingredients, and then stay a while with Darts Billiards. Live entertainment, karaoke, cornhole, they've got it all right there on Maynardville Pike, and it is very easy to find in downtown halls. So, John, let's let's go back. Um, We have the Big Ten picking up USC and UCLA to – put together this mega conference. So it's kind of a one-upping what the SEC did last year with Texas and uh, Oklahoma. We haven't spoken about that uh, yet. So I want to get your take on that before these reports that we're hearing lately that it could get even bigger and the Big Ten could venture further west like Lewis and Clark. John, your thoughts on the Big Ten picking up Southern Cal and UCLA. If I'd have told you that a week ago, what would you have said? Probably the same thing if you'd have told me a a week ahead of the SEC media days last year that the SEC was picking up Oklahoma and Texas. We were kind of blindsided by that. We were blindsided by this. But again, it's good news. I'm in pretty much of a euphoric state waiting for that riveting matchup between UCLA and Rutgers. That's the one that everybody points at. And the question is, will it be at 9 a.m. 
uh, Pacific time and they have to fly five hours to get to Rutgers. The whole thing is just bizarre. And to spin it forward now, according to a report with Barstool Big 12, I don't know how credible they are, but the Big 12 is now in deep discussions to add not four, but six of the Pac-12 schools, which would be Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and Arizona State. John, I think if this mega conference is happening, and it will, I believe that, that you want to be associated with the SEC or Big Ten to make sure you get in. So out of that list of schools, if I'm Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and Arizona State, I want out of the Pac-12, and I want to get in the Big 12 for some semblance of order. But if I'm Oregon and Washington, I might chill out and hang to see if the Big Ten makes a run at me. What do you make of those six teams? Well, um, I think it would be a natural progression for the Big Ten to add – Oregon, uh, to add Washington, and maybe Utah and Stanford. That, to me, would be a, a natural progression. You'd pretty much – you would have Northern and California as well as Southern California. Then you would have Oregon and Washington, two other states in your market. Apparently, apparently the Big Ten's decision is based totally on, totally on television market. So I hate to uh, – I hate to spoil its big dream, but uh, – People in L.A. don't care a whole lot about uh, college football. No. When I covered the national championship game in, I guess, January of 2006 in Pasadena, California, Southern Cal going for a third straight national title playing Texas. Southern Cal fans couldn't even manage to drive just a 30 minutes or so up the freeway to watch <laughs> that game. Texas fans outnumbered USC fans 2-1 to one at that game. It's just not that big a deal. It's a pro town. It's not even crazy about all pro teams. So I guess that is apparently the impetus for the for the Big Ten's expansion. The SEC is, to me, going more about a quality product with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas. So it's quality product versus uh, TV uh, sets watching the game. And I really think right now the SEC is ahead of the Big Ten, even with the addition of USC and UCLA. USC, obviously, a marquee program. UCLA isn't a marquee football program, never has been. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. But right now, if I'm picking sides, I'm picking the SEC. I totally agree. Um, as of now, what other teams could the Big Ten add? I don't know. I think the SEC is going to expand. I've got one school from a pretty good source I think is going to surprise you that I want to ask you about. Um, car Shopping Made Easy is Files Automotive Group right there on Callahan. They've got used cars, trucks, and SUVs in inventory, and they also have a great service department to take care of you. That's Files Automotive Group, and they do auto financing, and they're fair, and they're about integrity. I've told Mr. Viles here at Viles Automotive Group, I said, yeah, I really would like to steal your uh, business motto, and that is uh, uh, we need, we appreciate your business, and um, that's what they're all about. So they're going to make sure that you're a return customer. John, here's a school that might come out of left field and might surprise you. I'm hearing North Carolina has an awful lot of clout because the Big Ten would like to get them to dip into your TV market, of course. And the SEC would like North Carolina as well. I'm, I'm hearing they're in a good bargaining position from a source that's pretty tied in. Well, that makes sense. Uh, neither the Big Ten nor the SEC is in that market. North Carolina does not have a powerhouse football program. It's been good on and off. It, it's not like Rutgers or, or Maryland, if you look at the Big Ten now. But it is, It's I guess, it, when you look at the SEC, when you talk about expansion and keeping some sort of regional integrity, I think you would look at Florida State and Clemson uh, first and foremost. Because what that would do, it would give you two 
two rivalry games for starters um, in Clemson and South Carolina. Uh, Florida, Florida State is a great rivalry, and college football has really been based on rivalries for a long time. If if I were adding teams, I would to the SEC. I would add Oklahoma State because you maintain a great rivalry with Oklahoma. Again, I'm thinking about who's a better fit for the SEC in terms of ideology. All those the Oklahoma State fans, much just like Oklahoma's, really care about football. It's a college town, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, it's been very good in a lot of different sports. But if the SEC is going to get like-minded programs, to me, Oklahoma State, Florida State, and Clemson really stick out. Uh, I'm going to go in a different direction. Okay, so uh, Florida State, Clemson, I'm with you. North Carolina um, is a team that I would go after, but for a slightly different reason. I think they can be good in football. I really do. But I'm going to go way out on left field. I would take those three teams, North Carolina, Florida State, Clemson, then I'm adding Duke. And you're going to ask yourself, why in the world Duke? Because the times that I had to cover an SEC basketball tournament was pretty meaningless. You knew who was going to make the NCAA tournament. There wasn't a lot of pride in who wins the tournament for fans that aren't wearing blue. And I think instantly you've got a thing. I think you've got a real sellable thing if Duke and North Carolina in January, they would play each other just like they do in the ACC. Then they would play each other again. And then they would meet probably in the SEC tournament. I think you got a cool thing there where you turn a meaningless tournament into something special. Am I too crazy and going in that direction? Uh, you're not. It's not it's, admittedly, it's not football. I, I, I get that. I wouldn't say you're crazy. I just think you're a little bit off kilter. Um, I, I just, if you look at the ACC and basketball, it's not the old tobacco road thing. I mean, it's expanded where it includes the, the Northeastern teams. The ACC wasn't that good in basketball last year. I'm not how, how sure how good Duke will be without Mike Krzyzewski. Um, I know there's a lot of history in that rivalry, but but history's kind of going by the boards now. Um, so I would want North Carolina, but I do not care about Duke. Uh, not at all. I would have no interest in Duke. It gives you nothing in football. Um, nothing. I agree. And, and here's the thing. If you look at the programs the SEC has added, Oklahoma and Texas are good in almost everything. Texas won the Director's Cup. Uh, for 2021, 2021, uh, Oklahoma's got a softball dynasty. Both are good in baseball. Both are pretty good in basketball. So you're not just adding football programs. You're adding really powerhouse all-around programs. So I just don't see that that with Duke. Now, if I've got to have surgery, I'm going to Duke. I'm not going to Clemson, okay? That's but fair. For football, uh, just forget Duke. No, no, definitely not for football. This would be a total, but they're better at football than Vanderbilt. Uh, they're better at football. Than so, Missouri. so is everybody else. Well, it's true, but yeah, I think that that would give you, that would make you the ultimate football conference and the ultimate men's basketball conference and the ultimate win, women's basketball conference, which essentially those are the three main sports in terms of exposure. Now, of course, baseball is making a run at that, but Tennessee's in good shape there, and the SEC's in great shape there. I, I mean, I see a bigger picture than just football. And besides that, if the SEC were to expand to, what do we have them at, 20 teams? If we add four, you are you could use a patsy along the way if you're playing that many good teams. Yeah, Vanderbilt's your patsy. Uh, I, I, well, I don't always. want another Patsy. I, I want a really super competitive league with a lot of compelling matchups, and Duke doesn't give me that. Um, so I, well, I now let me, if I could get no, let me let me go with what you said. Now, if I can ultimately go your direction, and the Big Ten and the SEC 
and the Oregons of the world, those teams that want to be, and they can sit down and actually work things out and have a mega conference like the NFL where you could lose each and every week, unlike college football where you got guaranteed wins. I'm all for that. Okay. So that's way above me adding a little basketball element. If you could do that, which I think is the goal, that would be pretty awesome where 10 and two is a great regular season record. We would just have to change our thinking altogether. But I think that's what the powers that be want us to do. I think one of the biggest problems right now with college football are these meaningless non-conference games. SEC is great at that, stacking three sure wins in its yeah. non-conference schedule that nobody in the world wants to watch. Uh, they don't even want her to subscribe to ESPN Plus to watch those games. So, yeah, that's just like those are meaningless Saturdays. And, and it would be if you could maintain all the great rivalries you, that you have in the SEC, bring in like-minded schools, and then enhance the schedule where almost every game means something, that might require not just adding teams but maybe giving a couple of them the boot. Do you know how you get rid of teams in a conference? Is there a way to do that? Or are they just there for life? Wow. Um, I guess the only ones we've seen exit did so on their own volition. So, well, I don't know. Like the, like the owners in the NFL, a 75% vote. Uh, Daniel Snyder can get you thrown out. But I don't – does that exist? I mean, you've, you probably know better than me. Well, yeah, I wonder – a way to do that is the way the NCA does with determining FCS, FBS teams, programs. You you simply require certain standards in terms of size of stadium, facilities, that kind of thing. Uh, Missouri doesn't add a whole lot to the SEC. I think that's the one time, going back to your earlier point, where the SEC misstepped a little bit. I think they wanted that St. Louis market. And they wanted to get up there, but the problem is nobody cares about Missouri football. Other than that, it was a great idea. But yeah, you, know, you you've got to, you now have leverage. So Bobby Bowden in what 1991 could tell the SEC it's too tough. I don't want to come there. You can't say that anymore. If the Big Ten or SEC comes calling, you better jump on board, or you're going to be left out of a mega conference. Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. You. And, and a school to look at, which has always had leverage, could gradually be losing leverage as Notre Dame. Notre Dame's going to have to decide pretty quick if it wants to join the Big Ten. If it doesn't, it might not have an invitation to the party, at least not the big party. Well, that would be, that would be hard to imagine, but... At some point, Notre Dame is going to have to give in, right, and say that, hey, we're we're another football program. That's what we are. You know, I mean, this elitist attitude. Are you telling me the average Notre Dame fan, despite all the tradition, wouldn't trade that for what Alabama's done over the past decade? Come on. <laughs> of course it would. And and I think, I mean, the, the Big Ten is a natural move for Notre Dame. But if it wants to cling to ACC with for that, quote, other sports uh, interest, uh, it's making a mistake because the ACC is in big trouble here. Um, and, and I think it's possible you could have three super conferences, not two. But that third one would be, I would say it would be loosely connected, but now that the Big Ten is going west, what's loosely connected? I mean, I always thought the big the problem with the Big 12 was it's just scattered all over the country. I mean, West Virginia, Iowa State, and Texas Tech. But, but now the Big Ten's making this move. It's saying geography doesn't matter. Uh, the SEC hasn't gone that far. Well... 
be interesting to see what the SEC does as it pertains to Tennessee. I want to address that again. Though, I want to remind you that brought to you by Biles Automotive Group right there on Callahan Integrity is what they're all about. They want, they need, and they appreciate your business. So stop by Biles Automotive Group. Great selection, which you don't find nowadays. And the service department is through the roof. But again, integrity is what it's all about. So as it pertains to Tennessee, let's look at those schools that you mentioned. Um, let's start with North Carolina, Clemson. I think clearly that helps the Vols by being in those states more often in recruiting. Any disagreement there? No, I agree. I agree, but I think Tennessee with proximity has already helped. This could help it more. Here's where you, you, in, in terms of recruiting for Tennessee, Tennessee recruits regionally, really nationally. Uh, it's been fairly aggressive, at least it was initially with the NIL, not so much lately, but it's well situated in the Southeast. Uh, and it would be well situated if Clemson and, and North Carolina come aboard. The thing you don't, know, what you don't, know, if your program, what would have to be really concerning for you outside of the money would be is this is going to be the Big Ten and the SEC will be perceived as above everybody else. Yes. So you recruit to that. Uh, but though, if you're recruiting against it, that's going to be difficult. It's like, it's going to be like pay, playing for what now is considered a, a power five program or non power five program or FB or FBS versus FCS. You want to be in that. You want to be in those super conferences. I, I don't want to say that anyone kid made any one decision just based off um, something that happens with conference realignment. But I can tell you that Tennessee missed out on Francis Meliola. And I heard very strong Southern California rumors before they went to the Big Ten. And I'm thinking to myself, if I'm a recruit and I know that I have to hop on a plane flight for approximately four to five hours, four or five times a year, that just doesn't sound awesome at all. It sounds horrible. Plus, I'm playing in the cold when I'm signing up for a school that's in L.A. I think there could be a – I didn't mean to get sidetracked here, John, but I think there could be a backlash in recruiting for Southern Cal and, and UCLA. Well, yeah, but I think in football, I mean, how many times are you going to fly across country? Uh well, but I mean, you add to, you add Texas and you add Oklahoma and Tennessee responds to say, "Oh, we got a two hour plane ride to someplace cool." Um, and uh, whereas UCLA or USC prospects say, "Oh, we got a five hour plane ride to Rutgers." Yeah. How? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Rutgers is like the the glaring example of everything that's wrong with that merger. Uh, if you look at it, though, I think te- schools will change their flight patterns. I think. I think everybody in these major sports will start flying charter and that could reduce a lot of the time. Uh, I get but I, I, I'm I with you. I, well, I, I just wouldn't be excited about making those cross country trips, whether I'm going east to west or west to east. Uh, again, this is, I mean, this is all about the money and at least in the sec right now, you would have less travel. If you were being in, if you were in charge of the SEC and if you had a shot at Southern Cal, would have you have taken it? No. Mm-hmm. It does. I mean, it just doesn't do much for. I think Southern Cal is money desperate. That's why they're going to the Big Ten because they're going to get that when that television contract comes through and it's supposed to come through a Memorial Day and it was held up because hmm, maybe this UCLA and USA <laughs> thing. Um. No, I think that bells them out to some extent. I don't think money-wise, I know it's a private school, and I know there's a lot of money. Trust me, my son wants to go there. But it it doesn't mean it all goes to football, much like Vanderbilt or Kentucky. No, but if the SEC had an opportunity to add, and I, and I, I like having some regional integrity or like a re, – uh, um, a similar ideology with all your programs. However, if I had a chance to get Southern Cal 
and Notre Dame, and I'm the SEC, okay. I make exceptions in their cases. I, I, if, if you throw them in, yes. But yeah. do I have to take Southern Cal and UCLA? No, UCLA can just stay where it is. Yeah, so I know. that'd be an easy pass. Um, yeah, the, the, I would I would take – if you make it Southern Cal and Notre Dame, yeah, I think any conference, maybe the newly formed Rutgers conference would be interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. If you got <laughs> if the SEC got Southern California and Notre Dame, it's pretty much game over. What could the yeah. Big Ten have done then to, to counter that? There's no way. Then um, Ohio State's calling you saying, is there any way yeah. to keep going? Ohio State and Michigan are saying, you know, we might not want to come <laughs> south. I've always, always been a big fan of collard greens and yeah, that sort of thing. I can get yeah, we've stuff. we've had grits before at breakfast. <laughs> we love grits. Uh, they might have grits at Big Orange Phillies. I'm not sure, but I just love the sandwich. Big Orange Phillies, right there on Maynardville Pike. It's in the heart of Halls. So if you're in Maynardville or North Knoxville or anywhere, you can check out Big Orange Phillies, and I think you'll absolutely love it. So, uh, John, in the end. Let me ask you this. If you're the SEC, you can either stand pat at two teams, four teams, eight teams, whatever John wants to do. It's Commissioner Adams. What are you doing now that we know the Big Ten has expanded out to L.A.? Well, I'm adding four teams, at least four teams. And you're adding? Uh, I would State, probably, Clemson? I would add, here's what I – Here's what I my first choice is probably would be Clemson, Florida State, um, Oklahoma State, and maintain the Bedlam rivalry in a school that's very good in a lot of sports. And then if I could get it, I would bring in North Carolina. I tell you what, I'm going to be a little bit more clear. I know it sounds weird, so that's why you need to listen to the entire podcast. Um, I'm taking North Carolina, Duke, Florida State, Clemson to be regional, to add a basketball panache. Oklahoma State doesn't do as much for me as it apparently does for you. That's where I would go. Check out Big Orange Phillies. That's where you need to go, right in the middle of halls on Maynardville Pike and then Biles Automotive Group, where it's all about integrity. He's John Adams. John, where all can we follow your fantastic work? You're all over the world wide interweb. Yes, uh, you can follow my SEC podcast with Blake Topmeyer connected to the KnoxNews.com site. That's SEC Unfiltered. Uh, we produce that weekly. And then also my column, you can read at KnoxNews.com. Or if you want to hold a paper in your hands, the News Sentinel. Yeah. So does Unfiltered mean you'll curse a lot and talk about off-color stuff? Uh, it we use gossip, speculation, and make <laughs> and make fun of people. No, I don't believe that. He's John Adams. I'm Dave Hooker. It's only slightly unfiltered. This has been a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe.